Okay. So you can see that I have here some board games. So I have a whole bunch of different games. But today I just picked out a few. And what I'm going to be doing is just opening up the boxes and I'm going to um, read the instructions included in each game. So it will be sort of like, um, like an instructional type of video. I'll be reading, but you know, it will sort of have the tone of an instructional video. Okay, so I have these different games here. I decided to pick one, two, three, four, five games. So I have just this travel card game, Family Feud. Okay, but that does have instructions with it. And I've got this one here. This is one of my favorite games to play. Hollywood Game Night. Okay. And Another fun game, uh, Name 5. Someone wrote on it there. So, it's Can You Name 5. This game here is sort of like Scrabble. This is called Upwards. Okay. And lastly, got this going to open up each box and um, pull out the the directions and read those to you, okay? Alright. Okay, so I'd like to start with this family feud strike out card game. So here are the instructions. We've got some different cards here. Contents of this game include 102 survey cards, which includes 204 surveys, as there are surveys on each side of the card. 
There are three red strikeout cards, three blue strikeout cards, and the instructions. Okay, so to play, have one player serve as the host or MC to read the questions and handle the revealing of the answers. Split the remaining players into two teams. One team is the red team, the other the blue team. Each team volleys survey questions back and forth to win the card in play. Win four cards and you've won the game. To win a card, a team must either A. Not strike out or B. Recite the last remaining answer on the card. So to play, after you've set up your teams and chosen a host, just a note, to the right of the answer on the card is the number of people out of 100 surveyed that responded this answer. So, for example, this card here says name something a person opens every day. And we see that 36 people responded with mail or mailbox. 23 people responded door. 16 people responded mouth. Nine people responded with refrigerator, and six people responded with eyes. So, each new card in play begins with a face-off, as on the Family Feud game show, where a representative from each team shouts out the first answer he or she can think of upon hearing the survey questions. Both answers and their rankings on the card are announced by the MC. Should one player recite an answer that is not on the card, his or her team is issued a strike indicator, and the other team may answer again. If both answers are on the card, the team that recorded the higher ranking answer continues play and recites another one answer to the survey question. Play then volleys to the opposing team and that team recites an answer. The game will continue to volley back and forth with each team collectively reciting one answer to the survey question in play until a team has three strikes, or has answered the last remaining answer on the card. Okay, so that's it. A little different than the show. But, it's a fun game. So that's all for the Family Feud game. Okay. So let's move on to the next game. Okay, so this game that we're going to have a look at is name five. It says, can you name five? So this game is for ages 12 and over, and you need at least two players or two teams. So when we open the box here, We see that there is a game board. 
here's the start and we follow the arrows around the board and get to the finish here okay, so that's the game board we have some playing pieces there are four included and some dice We have a timer. Okay. And we have a bunch of cards here. And we have our instructions. in the box. We have 144 name cards, which is over 1,400 challenges. As you can see, there are many on each card. We have one game board, one die, four tokens, a 30-second timer, and the instructions. So, the object of name five. Be the first team to reach the name five space to win the game. Okay. So, setting up the game. Divide cards into two piles. Place each pile face down in front of each team. Play in two teams of two or three players each. Each team selects a token. The team with the youngest player goes first. Each team puts their token on the start space on the game board. Note, these instructions are written for team play. However, two additional tokens are included should you wish to play individually. How to play. The team going first rolls the die and moves their team's token, the number of spaces rolled on the die. A player from that team picks a card and reads the name 5 challenge corresponding to the color of the space on which the token landed. Another member of the team starts the timer. The team has 30 seconds to answer the challenge by naming 5. For example, Name five orange foods. Oranges, cheddar cheese, carrots, pumpkin, apricots, etc. Some answers may fall into the given category, but only partially, such as foods that have orange in them, like candy corn or peach cobbler. We feel this is acceptable, provided the team can explain their answer. There should be some room for explanation as long as it is done within the 30 second time limit. On their turn, team members may all yell out answers as they think of them and keep count as they go. Option. If this format becomes too chaotic, teams may wish to have a rotating spokesperson report the answers before the timer runs out. If the team is successful in coming up with five answers within the Name 5 category, the team rolls again and takes another turn. If unsuccessful, it's the next team's turn. If a team of Name 5 All-Stars plays five consecutive rolls, the other team automatically takes the next turn. Players return their cards 
to the bottom of the stack and pick a new card for each turn. To win, name five. When your team's token reaches the end of the board, you must roll the specific number of spaces needed to reach the name five space in the center of the board. If you roll a higher number, you must play the name five challenge matching the color of the space your token is on to earn another roll. When you roll the number needed to land on the name five space, take a card. Your team has 90 seconds. Turn the timer over twice to complete all five of the name five challenges on the card to win the game. If unsuccessful, it is the other team's turn. On your next turn, draw another card and complete four name five challenges in 90 seconds. If still unsuccessful, it is the other team's turn. Next turn, three challenges in 60 seconds. Next turn, if needed, two challenges in 30 seconds. And finally, if still unsuccessful, complete one name five challenge in 30 seconds to win. Okay. Note, the white arrow is not a space and may not be landed on or counted as a space. Name five house rules. Name five is a party game. Certain name five categories are more open-ended than others. Certain categories are more subjective, where others are very direct and have a limited number of correct responses. For this reason, we found it impossible to put each and every correct answer in this box. We encourage you to police yourselves while playing. If you'd like to issue a challenge to a certain answer, put it to a vote or look it up. Failing that, simply choose another card and play that name five challenge. So then there are different spaces that are on the game board. We see there is an all play spot, which looks like this here. We have a flip-flop. We have a wild. And we have a double down. So here, if you land on any of these spaces, for the all play space, the all play symbol has two colors beneath it. If your team lands on an all play space, you may select one of the two colors for your name five category before looking at the card. The other team will play the name five challenge that matches the other color on the space. One player from each team may then silently read the card. The timer is not used in this round. When both players who have read the card are ready, they both announce the category to their respective teams and the teams race to be the first to name five from their category. The first team to complete their name five challenge rolls the die and takes the next turn. If neither team completes the name five challenge, both teams draw another card and race to name five again. Note, a variation to the all play is to have each team simply shout out one answer to their name five challenge. The first team to name one wins the round. If both teams shout out their first answer at the same time, they should go on to a second answer until one team shouts out an answer first to win the round. Now if we land on the flip-flop space, okay. if your team lands on the flip-flop space,
space, turn over a card, and read the name five talent that matches the color on the space. Your team has 10 seconds to name one answer to the challenge category. The other team then has 10 seconds to name another answer. Then your team answers again, and play continues flip-floppy back and forth until one team can't name another challenge answer within 10 seconds. You can use a watch to keep track. When one team is unable to name another answer, the team that last answered takes control of the board. Note, you may wish to record the answers on a sheet of paper. Any repeat answers would be counted as a wrong answer. Now if we land on the wild space, if your team lands on a wild space, you may read all of the name five challenges on the card and decide which challenge to answer. Start the timer, and your team has 30 seconds to name five items for that name five challenge. If successful, your team takes another turn. If not, it's the other team's turn. And finally, if we land on the double down space. If your team lands on a double down space, you may read all of the name five challenges on the card and choose two challenges to name all five items in 30 seconds. Start the timer and name the item. If your team is successful, you roll the die and move double the number rolled on the die. If not, it's the other team's turn. Thanks for playing. Okay, so that's it for name five. Sounds 
very similar to to Scrabble. And here is the bag of letter tiles. So, the letter G. And they just kind of fit. It's a little bit different style than Scrabble. They kind of fit into the little square there. Okay. So, just placing a few of them on there just for show. game. It comes with one game board, 100 letter tiles, four tile racks, four rubber feet for the bottom, one tile bag. The object of the game is to build words to score the most points. So it just uh, tells you how to put the game board together. Place the game board in the center of the play area so all players can reach it. Place a tile rack in front of each player. Get a pencil and paper and choose a player to keep score. Have each player draw a letter tile from the bag. The player with the letter closest to the letter A goes first. Return all letter tiles to the tile bag and reshuffle them. Each player draws seven letter tiles in playing order. Don't let your opponents see your letter tiles. Keep a dictionary nearby for any challenges. The dictionary can only be used for challenges. So it tells you how many of each letter is included. Um, so there's not the same amount. There's seven letter A's. There's only three letter B's. And it just goes on and on to tell you how many of each letter there are. Okay, so how to play. On the first turn, form a word of two letters or more. Your word must cover one of the four central start squares and read across or down. So it needs to start in this space here. Okay. And score two points per letter tile for any word, only one tile high. So I could make the word let's put this one here. Bead B E A D. So I would get two points per letter. So that would be eight points. Okay, refill your rack to seven tiles. Then your turn is over and the play passes to the left. So on all other turns, play one or more letters from your rack to make a word. Create a word by connecting to an existing word or stacking letters on top of an existing word to change it. All letters must be played on a single line, reading either across or down, never diagonally. You can stack in the upwards game. You can also exchange or pass instead of playing tiles. Count every tile in your word 
and announce your score. If your word is only one tile high, score two points per letter tile. Made with any stacked letters, score one point per letter tile, including all stacked letter tiles underneath your word. Refill your rack to seven tiles and your turn is over. Play passes to the left. So you can also play solo um, and just score for yourself. This game is for ages eight plus. Okay. So then it gets into the scoring and word play. So score two points per letter, letter tile for any word where all letters are only one tile high. Or score one point per letter tile for any word that contains stacked tiles. But count every tile your word is built from, including all tiles underneath. If you form two or more words on the same turn, each word is scored. Score for all letters or stacked tiles common to those two words. Okay. Um, and there's some examples for building words and scoring. It says if you build down from the letter D in mood to form the word dear, you score eight points. Two points for each letter as the word is only one tile high. The next player could then build across using the letter E in dear to form net. Any adjacent letters must also form a word. For example, the letter N in net is next to the letter O in mood, forming the word on. In this case, net scores six points and on scores four points for a total of ten points. Now stacking letters, you can vertically stack letters to change a word or words. For example, stack the letter W on the M in mood to change mood to wood. This scores five points, one point for each letter tile. You cannot stack more than one letter on the same tile in a turn. You cannot stack over an entire word. At least one letter from the previous word must remain visible. You cannot stack a letter directly on the same letter. Example, an A on an A. Letters cannot be stacked more than five tiles high. Okay. And then for some more on stacking. You could stack the letter L on top of the letter D of wood and deer then stack a P on the letter R in deer to change them to wool and leap, scoring six points for a total of no, scoring six points for each word, so a total of 12 points. You can build a new word and change an existing word at the same time. For example, building a cross and stacking the letter N on top of the letter P in leap forms smack, scoring seven points, and changes the word leap to lean, scoring seven points for a total of 14 points. You cannot simply add an S to a word already on the board to form a plural. You can, however, form a word that connects to an existing word to make it plural. For example, plus can connect to the word net and make it plural. 
these words score 8 points each for a total of 16 points. Okay, bonus scoring. Score 2 extra bonus points if you use the Q U letter tile in any word where all the letter letters are only one tile high. In any stacked combination, QU is worth the usual one point. Score 20 extra bonus points if you use all seven of your letter tiles in one turn. And then there are some illegal words. A word that falls into any category below is illegal and cannot be used. Words that are always capitalized, like names and places of people, like names of places or people, words requiring a hyphen, words requiring an apostrophe, abbreviations, acronyms and symbols, prefixes and suffixes that cannot stand alone, foreign words unless they appear in the dictionary. Okay. Challenging a word. If you think a word is misspelled or illegal, challenge it. The word must be challenged before another word is played. Use a dictionary to decide if the challenged word is legal. If the challenged word is illegal, the player who played it removes the letter tiles in question and attempts one other word or passes. If the second word is also illegal, the turn is over without scoring any points. Okay. Passing. You may pass your turn at any time during the game. Passing can be tactical, especially toward the end of the game, to allow a better scoring opportunity to open up. Exchanging your letters. On your turn, you may exchange one of your letter tiles for a new one. Put the tile you are returning to one side, draw a new tile from the tile bag, then return the side-lined tile to the tile bag. As a penalty, you lose your turn. Exchanging can be tactical, especially exchanging a letter such as J or Z if you draw them late in the game. How to end the game. The game ends when either a player uses all of their letter tiles and no tiles remain in the tile bag. Or no one can make a word and all players pass their turns in consecutive order. And then when the game is over, you total each player's final score. Deduct five points for each letter tile they have not played. And winning the game, the player who scores the most points wins. Okay. So this is a really fun game, actually. It's been a while since I have played it. But Or I'll play it again someday. It's good for the uh, kids to play too.
I think that I will end on this game only because I think if I go through the other two games it will take a long time so I will definitely save those and maybe make another video like this going over the game instructions alright so I hope that you enjoyed this video and thank you so much as always for watching